G'day, it's Heath here from FingerLessons.com. The Black Nag is such a great trad tune. It's a jig in the key of A minor. We're going to use the melody as a cross picking and a floating technique uh, study. So we're going to compare two ways of playing the melody. We're going to play it in perhaps a more standard approach and then we're going to use the floating technique and, and the difference is really interesting and the cross picking kind of naturally happens within the tune as well. So we're going to start out with part A and we're going to compare perhaps a more standard way of going about it. In that open position. Then we're going to compare this floating uh, approach. Which works really well, it actually really suits the style of the tune, the jig picking, uh, and it creates a different, perhaps more smooth sound to the melody. But we'll compare those in a moment. But if you head to pickinglessons.com, you'll grab yourself a copy of the tab that we're working with uh, in the member section there as well. We will continue this lesson and break down part B and compare that as well. But let's start out here with part A. Let's have a quick slow play through uh, the floating method and then we're going to compare it to the way that you might normally go about it and just see the difference um, look at the difference in terms of the technique but also how it may make it easier to use the floating technique one two one and a two and a Okay, so there is the floating method applied to the melody. So if we compare the two, here is, I guess, the standard approach for the melody. And the left hand is sitting in that open position. We're playing the C and the B and the D and the B all on the same string. Now, if you're not familiar with the floating technique, the floating technique is very similar to a melodic banjo technique. Sometimes it's referred to a harp-like sound, but what we're trying to do here is basically let our notes be played on adjacent strings so they kind of stack over each other. For example, rather than B, C and D all on that second string, we're gonna use the open B, the C, and then the D, all apart from each other, and it makes a really uh, interesting approach. So that alternate melody ends up looking like this. And for this particular melody, it actually structures it in a really, really nice way. So let's run through the basic version of the melody first. Our picking is going to be approached in the same way all the way through. So when we do pick our, our three eighth notes that we have for the jig time signature, we're going to play that as a down, up, down. It's a really consistent approach. So every time, perhaps in measure two is a good example, we're going to have down, up, down, down, up, down for the two groups of three eighths. There are variations when we hit the, the quarter notes and the eighth notes. For example, in the first beat, down and then up on that particular rhythm. But we'll look at that as we go through. So basic melody, open position, the up and the down, up, down. The right hand, just keep an eye on that. So you can see there, very much open position. The right hand isn't going to change though, so just make sure you get that right hand uh, happening there. Again, the down, up, down for the three eighths, and the quarter note quaver we find at the beginning is the down and the up. Let's compare that though now to the floating technique. We're going to move our C note over to the fifth fret. It's really the only note we have to adjust. But when we do that, it really changes the approach. So uh, what we end up having, that third finger is going to shift across, down, up, down, the B and the C together, and then the D and the C together. We hold those through, we get a little cross picking here, down, up, down. It's kind of cross picking all the way through when we get this floating technique. So two string cross picking, a three string pattern, two string pattern, so the cross picking kind of develops as we start to incorporate that floating technique. And notice that really, if we think about it, it's only the C that we've shift positions, but because we've done that, we're, we're able to stack those notes in a way that we get that really nice floating or harp-like sound. It's interesting to compare the two. 
I feel that the floating technique for this particular melody and the way that we pick it, the structure of the picking, actually works in a, in a really nice way. It, it's almost, I'd almost argue that it's probably easier to play it this way with a little bit of practice. So when you start to play all those notes in a standard approach, that's fine, that, that's all good. But when you start to play that same melody, the left hand's actually really cruisy. You could say that the right hand perhaps gets a little bit more complicated, but once you've worked on some of the techniques, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, let's just work on some of these floating or cross-picking rolls at the moment that we're, we're using. So the first one we'll look at is just the two string patterns. So let's use the second half of the first measure as an exercise. So we want to play the three notes together, down, up, down, down, up, down. Two strings. The reason we're starting each group with a down is just to accent that beat, because remembering that the jig time or 6-8 time has the two pulses, so one, two, one, two. And by playing a down stroke there, we're just emphasizing that pulse within our playing. So that's a really good exercise. Uh, let's jump ahead to uh, the measure where we have this roll. Uh, beginning of measure, uh, what is measure 17. We have this little roll here, so we're holding the D and the C. We're playing this floating technique with the right hand rolling through uh, the cross picking. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. Different to perhaps going. Find the melody notes on that second string. And you get a really nice overlap of those notes. So they're the two techniques you probably want to work on for your picking there. But otherwise, compare the two, make an assessment and see what you think. Do you go the standard or the more typical approach in the open position? Or for a melody like this, do you feel like stacking those notes in the floating position and using some cross picking, does it work for you? Practice them both and give it a try. It is really nice, the technique, and it does create a, perhaps a smoother sound to our movement of the melody. Okay, so if you jump to pickandlessons.com, we're gonna break down part B now as well. So we'll compare the two. Part B is a longer section. We have eight measures that repeat. Uh, there's much more cross-picking that we find just within the melody anyway. Uh, and then including our floating technique, you'll find that it's a very, very good cross-picking uh, study. Couldn't have come up with a better one ourselves. So this great tune, the black nag, kind of has it all in it. Uh, so pickandlessons.com, the tablature's there as well. Head on over and I'll see you there.